Well, it's about time to get started with the matches for today with NRG versus Revival here at the Rocket League Championship Series covering North America. Let's go over to the commentators. It's Wave Punk and Findable Carpet. Take it away, guys. Get up and get loud, guys. It's game day here at Rocket League Championship Series, week three of league play. It's coming down to the wire carpet. All these matches are starting to matter more and more, and we're starting off today with Revival versus NRG. We passed that halfway mark of the season, mm -hmm. and now teams are realizing, like, ah, oh, we're running out of time. we got to start getting these wins in. Revival NRG, really interesting for me to see. NRG is a team that's just always done well. You see Leaf mentioned they're really... Um, kind of interesting. They mm -hmm. always approach. I, I've talked to some pro players that are like, we don't know how to deal with NRG sometimes because they just do something different every game. For sure. But Revival, they've taken a win off of G2 and Take 3, which are both G2 has not really shown a lot so far, but Take 3 has been a team that we've seen just blow everything out of the mm -hmm. water. Mm -hmm. And talking about the fact that they're also really well rounded mm -hmm. could be a really good. Um, advantage going into this game. Yeah, for sure. Those G2 and Take 3 were two teams we were talking about a lot in the preseason being really hot teams we were expecting to really make some big changes. And Revival comes in here is able to take it to those two. And they've got themselves in a comfortable 2-2 position right now. Both NRG and Revival holding their own fates in their own hands right now. If they can possibly just pull off some wins here, they are set to be in that top six. We'll get game number way underway. Or game number one underway. Revival blocks that one. We'll see Revival here in the blue with NRG on the offense. Fireburner, that top striker in North America, getting that first goal. NRG with no hesitation from the corner. You see Fireburner. We talk about how good of a third man he is, that striker. He swung wide for that, got the tight angle, and put it to the crossbar. 53% shooting percentage and the highest goal score per game at 1.38. This guy is amazing. He strikes immediately here in game number one against Revival. See Chrome play it over to Hot Wheels Sid. We'll see if they can... Create a counter play here. Push that one. Got it nice and deep into the box, but no pressure. We'll leave it for Fireburner and Jacob, who pushed this one out. It's Jacob in the corner trying to set it up. Draws two out. It'll be Gino and Chrome, though. We're able to push it back around the corner. Sad pops it down into the middle. Gino immediately responds, trying to get the carry. Drop it towards the goal just off the crossbar. Hot Wheels, it's not quite there in time. Great attempt. Gino Cop trying to keep that pressure on. The air dribble in that situation is actually great because it, it put pressure on and forced them to drop back in a net. Oh, a nice setup from Chrome. Can Hot Wheels hit finish? He drops it oh. just off the post. It'll be Jacob who clears it away. A close one there for Revival as they almost tie it up. Revival is doing a good job of trying to catch NRG. As soon as you see them put on the pressure, they're trying to get the counterattacks. Oh, but there's the three-man rotation from NRG. Fireburner shot being blocked and saved by, by Gino Cop. Now he's in the corner. Up on the wall, passes it down to Hot Wheels City. Goes up for the shot, blocked. A Fireburner's car, and Batmobile getting in the way, and Sad now trying to push it through. Both teams going for counter plays, taking their shots, and then when it falls apart, backing off, letting the other team move forward. Here we see Revival again back on the offense right after NRG was able to gain ball control. Sad Jr. trying to push it through, but Chrome gets it through the back line. Gino does not set it up off the wall, and Chrome misses the setup off of that backboard. That'll leave it with NRG here in the midfield. Revival had a good tactic. We see Gino Cop, he was going to go up on the back wall, try and pass it out to a teammate. But the moment he realized he was going to waste all the boost and not get contact, he just drops back down and tries to rotate back. Nice hit there by Hot Wheels Sid. Puts it into the corner. Fireburner tries to clear it through Gino Cop and will cross field laterally. Now Sad Jr. Not able to get through Chrome. Gino's right there in front of the net, finds the center, and it's a tie game. There we go, NRG slow to get to net. We see two players right here coming out of net. Jacob just a little bit too soon with his cowboy hat coming out of net. Mm -hmm. I, like, I like that he wears the hat, though, because I always know where he is. Yeah, it's very easy to know. Oh, that, that, one's, that one's Jacob, clearly. Yep. You don't have that, to read anything. That monstrous hat. You know how much I don't like reading, Wade. <laughs> Sad Jr. will get the clear off of Jacob's touch on kickoff. Can he make the shot? No, Gino will clear it away. Back up to midfield, and he's following his own touch to try to put it around the corner. Hot Wheels is watching here in the middle of the field. It will be Jacob who puts it out to Fireburner, shoots it over the top of two. Hot Wheels sit falls back quickly, and will pick up the loft from Gino. Sends it onto the backboard and drops down off the touch from Sad Jr. Can Gino finish this one? He drops it towards the box. Jacob straight up, clears it off to the side a bit. Hot Wheels puts another shot on the net, cleared by Sad this time. NRG holding on in their own box as Revival continues to knock on the door. They are holding on, but a bit weak. We see them dedicating too many people to a lot of defensive plays. We're also seeing Revival shots being a bit soft, which is giving them that, uh, that time they need to get set up back in net as Gino takes another one, trying to shoot through Fireburner. Gets a pass, Hot Wheels City. He's up here in this first person position. Not usually where we see Fireburner, but it's made a nice setup there for Sad Jr. Chrome will get the Spider Man clear into the corner. Now he's watching. It's Jacob 
drops it nicely into the box. The Fireburner not there to finish it off. Gino will get the clear. That was a perfect delivery right in front of that, but I don't think anyone from NRG expected Jacob to get that beautiful second touch. Oh, a nice dunk by Sad Jr. Drops it in front of the box. Gino Cobb clears it away. Highly offensive game. Both teams being very aggressive right now with 140 left to go, and it's a tie game. Game number one. Gino Cop now watching as Jacob puts it into the center to Sad Jr. They cross the field, try to get set up here on the left side. As Fireburner takes a shot, goes wide, and Hot Wheels Sid will be able to clear it into the corner, but Sad Jr. keeps the pressure on, dropping a nice one into the box, clear to the side by Gino, an excellent touch, just letting it carry its momentum over into the corner. He knew he couldn't get too strong of a hit. So he'll be able just to push it over to the side. Now he's in the midfield. He's trying to set this one up. Chrome is in the air, looking for a shot. Blocked by Sad Jr. And Fireburner with an opportunity will get the lead back for NRG. I saw Chrome trying to get the dunk. It was actually a good read by him. He went up high knowing that he was going to get it, but Fireburner puts it straight. Or it's not, apologies, not Fireburner. Um, I believe that was Sad Jr. puts mm -hmm. it straight down instead of up. He saw that Chrome was going to try and read the prediction, puts it down instead. And Fiburner is able to get yet another goal on his statistics. That is two here. All the goals so far on NRG side being scored by Fireburner. How will Sid now with one minute remaining? They have to tie the game up. Sad Junior passes out to Jacob. Gino Cop waits on the wall. Can knock oh, it through. No. And will the breakaway go in? It does. An unfortunate pinch there, but it favors NRG. As tough as it is to try and leave somebody back for situations like this, Gino Cop was last man. He tried to contest it off the wall. And he was on the outside of the ball. Mm -hmm. You want to contest that from the inside. You want to at least get between the ball and the net. But contesting that from the outside, you always risk a pinch going towards your net. Yeah, just leaves it for Jacob, who can just he, he can position himself exactly to make that pinch go straight into the goal. These guys know how to do that. Jacob will drop another one towards the box, cleared this time by Chrome. Gino on the wall will put it out into the midfield for Hot Wheels Sid, who has to beat Fireburner here. The dunk goes in favor of NRG. Dropping in a dangerous spot. Fireburner won't finish that one off. He's gotten three. Spreading this nice cushion. NRG now with three goals in the lead. Just now trying to contest everything. Fireburner with another goal. That will be a hat trick for this game. He has played very well. Living up to the hype so far. With 36 seconds left, Revival down by three. It's been a rough second half for them here in game number one. And they need to start thinking about what they're going to change up in game number two. So energy continues to knock on the door at this point, though, with 24 seconds left. It's looking all over here. NRG coming out very, very hot in game number one. It's not just that, but offensively, they're their passing placements have been just exceptional. They're not going for the typical backboard. They're not just trying to hit in the corner, but they're always taking it across. They're almost hitting it down at the ground in front of net to put a lot of speed and pace on it, giving Revival a lot shorter of a time to react. Revival still looking for that buzzer beater goal, perhaps. Not going to happen as Gino Cop slams it into the ground. NRG does take game number one of our best of five series here. Revival looking hot. They had some great moments of offensive prowess, able to really push through the front line, get it into the box, create shooting opportunities, but just did not quite materialize here as they had, what is this, nine shots and just one goal to show for it. Yeah, I mean, we talk a lot about players, especially when we go from season one to season two. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we saw where Kings of Urban, or now known as NRG, we saw where they struggled, where they had hard points, and we know what the skill these players are. And I am just so impressed watching what Fireburner has turned into. Mm -hmm. He is really solidified into that spot on the field that he is. He's always there. Jacob and Sad Jr. trying to do kind of the, the brunt work. Right. They're getting up there. They're getting the contest. They're centering it for Fireburner. And he is always there when he needs to be. It's, and it's hard to get that kind of placement. Yep. No, it's, it's a very, very good strategy. You have these two just bullies up on your front line mm -hmm. who just continuously contest everything that gets put to them, continuously just try to pull the defense out of position, and you just on that back line have Fireburner lurking, waiting, and just seeing all the opportunities. He's able to just slam them in time and time again. You, like you said, he got a hat trick there off of five shots, got two saves to boot. They had five saves. There's some decent defense from NRG, but like we had pointed out during the game, there was a bit of the shooting from our revival side was kind of weak. It was a little weak. It was hard for them to amount any kind of passing plays and to try and misdirect NRG, but there were a lot of defensive mishaps in the very beginning. I see NRG putting almost like two like two players to, I think three defensive plays in a row they will sure. put two players up for. It. So if we can see Revival capitalize on that, they would definitely close the gap. Absolutely. If they could just shoot a bit stronger, a bit faster, but much more even series, that is definitely a weakness they could exploit here in game number two. They're going to have to change up something. Chrome with a nice shot, but Sad Junior blocks it. Gino in to finish. It'll go wide on the interference from NRG. Now Chrome is trying to beat out Jacob here. He's got two behind him. It'll be Gino who has to get the clear. Puts it into the corner. 
Now Hot Wheels sit at midfield, gets dunked by Fireburner. His shot just barely goes off the post, and Jacob can't quite get the angle he needs to put it in. First 30 seconds, we're seeing NRG with all the scoring opportunities. Fireburner will finish that one in off the pressure. When we talk about NRG with their unorthodox plays, we saw it just a revival early on in this play. They had all the pressure. Fireburner went out for a save. When he was coming back, he decided to bump somebody on revival, even though he was on defense. Bumped him out of the way. They couldn't keep the pressure up. And then they just turned it right around on him and got a goal. Amazing play there from NRG. They win the kickoff here. Jacob up, just takes a straight shot. Whoa. Just barely goes off the crossbar. Fireburner in the finish, can't quite get the angle. Can Sad? No, it'll be Gino Cop that clears it away. And now Chrome looking for the counter play. Up into the corner. Jacob puts it across the midfield line up to Sad Jr. who does not get the angle. And now Hot Wheels sit. Trying to contest as Fireburner crosses it laterally. Up to Gino. Sad Jr. pops it high and Gino just lofts it for Chrome here. He's gonna try and drop it. A nice dangerous spot. It'll be Jacob and Fireburner. There's that overcommitment you were talking about. Two players, one up. Let's see if Revival can punish. Chrome tries to pass to Hot Wheels Sid, who puts it back into the corner. And it's in a nice spot here. Can Gino finish? He does, and it's a tie game. Sad Jr. didn't realize he was last man on net. He just started to cheat out to fall this into the corner after Fireburner tried to get that, but Fireburner was not able to get there in time. Sad Jr., he was struggling for boost for a lot of that. I think about 15 seconds ago, he came back to that corner. Boost wasn't mm -hmm, there. Mm -hmm. He had to try and go for a save. He wasn't able to get it in time. Well, we saw them overcommit. When you send two people up on defense, not only does it leave this opening on the field where you don't have, you know, you had two people go for the same spot, and now there's, there's an opening. It also consumes two players' boost, and now both players are low on boost, which means both players are going to need to move out sooner, which just makes it even more difficult on defense. Revival able to capitalize on those defensive miscues here, and now... We have a tie game with 3.22 left to go. Chrome able to get it past Fireburner, draw him out of the midfield, leave it for Gino. He puts it off the backboard and what? is able to get the shot from the corner. And there's the lead there for Revival. This first touch, I'm happy with Gino Cop. He didn't put it in net. He saw somebody there, so he puts it to the corner. Knows it's going to stay away from that backboard. Mm -hmm. He didn't want to get on the backboard. He saw the player on the back trying for the Spider-Man save. It starts coming across. He gets the tight angle. Yep, very well done. Drawing Sad Jr. onto that wall and then making the strong mechanical play to get that shot. Given the lead here to Revival, as they look to tie up the series, a bump on the Sad Junior leaves a very open net, but Jacob will be the first one in. Now he's looking to tie the game up for NRG. Wrapping it around the corner. Chrome will counter it. Now Fireburner able to get the touch. That's how we'll sit, puts it out into the middle. We're seeing Sad Junior play it off the wall. Jacob takes the shot towards net, cleared by Chrome. Blocked away. Fireburner keeps the pressure on. It's in a dangerous spot here. Can he finish? He gets it underneath Gino, but it will be Chrome who passes it out. Revival able to get the defensive plays they need. Oh, oh but Jacob. it's Jacob who will finally slam it in underneath Hot Wheels in. Jacob, as soon as he was about to retreat, he sees his ball coming his way, turns around immediately, puts the pressure on. Somehow that first touch was incredibly powerful off the backboard, passed directly to him, and then still places it perfectly onto the left post. Well, that was, I was saying before that goal got scored is we're seeing Revival get the saves. They're able to block the shots on net, but they're not able to get strong clears and transition out into offense. And because of that, it gives so many opportunities to NRG. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. Fireburner getting just the craziest of saves there to keep that one away. Keep us tied up here right at halftime. The follow-up from Chrome. It was a good second touch, but let's see if they can retreat back in time. Both teams every now and then struggling to get back in the net. Fireburner tries to put it out in the middle. Hot Wheels hit already up for this one, looking for the double tap. Drops it down wide of the goal. Gino looks to keep the pressure on. Jacob will clear it through those two players as Chrome puts it back into the corner. Set out to middle by Jacob, but all the Revival players have to fall back for boost. They'll be resetting up on defense. Gino drops it to Hot Wheel. Can't get it through Jacob, who puts it back into the box. Chrome now puts the ball into the back line, but it's Fireburner who's there. Gino and Chrome now up on the offense. They have it in NRG's corner. Hot Wheels said just looking to contest this. Can't get a touch onto it. It's Jacob gets it past Chrome as well. And Gino just barely rotates back in time, getting that save. A demo onto Chrome. Buy a little bit of space here for NRG. So we're seeing Revival knocking on their door once again. As soon as you see NRG not dedicate two people to a save, you're able to watch them just take this two-man clear. They go, they just pass it back and forth, keeping it out of the hands of Revival, trying to oppose the players. I will said sets that one just offside of the goal. Towards Gino, now Hot Wheel puts it onto the far wall. Back and forth, using a lot of lateral motion, just putting the ball from one side to the other side to the other side to the other side, just back and forth and back and forth. It makes it very difficult for 
um, NRG to know where the ball is going to be. Now Hot Wheels say with a minute remaining, has an opportunity, gets the flick up onto the crossbar. Chrome finds the upper 90, and there is the lead back for Revival. Hot Wheels sit with the patience. He notices that he's going to get there first by a long shot. So he sucks in Jacob, gets the first one to the crossbar. Chrome follows through. He must have been so happy his teammate was that close. And they did so well. An excellent use of the backboard. And able to get the lead here in game number two. And RG now down by one with 54 seconds remaining. Put it into the corner and Hot Wheels will clear it away. Up to Gino. It's a nice touch onto the wall. Plays it towards Sad Jr., who's been having a decently quiet series on defense. He's up on the wall now. And Gino able to get it past him. Can he drop it through? Draws out Fireburner. And Jacob will get there in time. Not let the shot come through for revival. They don't want to let them expand the lead. Can they get the shot? No, Gino and Hot Wheels Sid both go up for that one. This could be bad as Sad Junior takes a shot. Oh, it bounces off the crossbar. Will Chrome clear it? He does, gets it away. His Fireburner was coming through. A close one there. His energy had the opportunity to tie it up. 15 seconds left. They're still down by one. Jacob drops it to Sad, who takes no the way. shot. Gets it past Gino Cop, and it's a tie game. This pass was incredible. Jacob off the wall, soaring upside down to get the touch, seeing Sad Junior over in the corner, who just exquisitely places it dead center in the net. An amazing play. Sad Jr. having a quiet game, shows up when he needs to. With 11 seconds left, they've tied it up here in game two. Look to see if they can just take that two game lead. It's Revival, just trying to tie it up. They have an opportunity to get the buzzer beater. Can Gino drop it? He sets it up for Chrome. They drew out all the defenders. It's on the backboard. Will Hot Wheels say go up? No. This is still in a dangerous place. There he is to shoot, but what? it touches the ground off the bounce of the post. Very close opportunity for Revival. NRG not prepared for that. We saw again getting too close to dedicating too many people to saves. That could be a detriment to them in this series if they keep that up. Chrome now pressing forward. Here in sudden death overtime, first goal will win as Hot Wheels puts one just high. Gino keeps that pressure on an amazing flick to put that one back out into the middle. And Hot Wheels hit and Gino both missed, but Chrome able to get it through Sad Jr. will put it back to Fireburner. Now Hot Wheels hit, trying to win the 50-50. He wins the first one, but then gets a second touch that drops it straight down. Gino pushes this one out towards Chrome. They draw out Sad Jr. and Jacob. Chrome gets it over the top of Fireburner, who had been demoed and spawned on the back line. Now Hot Wheels hit. Trying to take a shot. They draw out the goalies. Again, seeing multiple players commit here on KOU. But no one able to quite capitalize just yet from Revival with the first minute about to expire here in overtime. It's been a very even overtime so far. I want Revival to start noticing when NRG is overcommitting on defense and start having a player come up a lot quicker. They haven't capitalized on nearly as many opportunities as NRG has been giving them. Ball in NRG's corner. Jacob sets it high. Sad Junior will be the first one there. Continues to play it off the wall. Gino will let it bounce on his hood and push this one through. Gets a pass. Fireburner. Hot Wheels sit in the air. Has an opportunity, but Jacob on the backboard will clear it away. Now Chrome out to midfield. Sad Junior passes up towards Fireburner. Can he get the angle? He tries to drop it over the top of Gino Cop. And he goes into the corner for Chrome. Now it's up to midfield again. Fireburner trying to pass to Jacob, but interrupted. By Hot Wheels Sid into the corner. A demo on Chrome could be huge. It is huge. Hot Wheels Sid gets the buzzer, gets the overtime goal for the win. Chrome getting this demo on Sad Jr. as he was about to come out. What a perfect read of knowing that Sad Jr. is going to try and come off of that wall and try and contest that ball. Leaving it a wide open net, kind of smoke screening so his opponents didn't know where that was coming. And Revival is able to tie up the series one to one. They were able to pull it back here, guaranteeing game four, our best of five. A very well played around there. We did see them finally starting to capitalize a bit on the plays, on the, on the defensive mistakes from NRG. Able to step up there, get the win. We saw at least two goals come off of that, and in a game decided by one goal, those two were critical. Yeah, and if Revival is able to come up a little, if they, they see like, oh, look, they're about to put two people up. Even if it's going to be a hard clear, have somebody come up a little bit sooner, a little bit mm -hmm. quicker. Try and read that ball just that half second faster, mm -hmm. because if you can start putting pressure on a single defender, which we just saw with Thad Jr. Mm -hmm. um, I think I just said Thad Jr. Thad Jr. Thad Jr. It's all right. Um, but, you, you know, with Chrome with that demo, knowing that there was he was the last man back, 
able to open that net up, forcing Fireburner and Jacob to try their best to get there. But the shot placement was just a little bit too good. Yeah, for sure. And we're seeing like, massive amounts of shots. 13 shots from NRG, 14 shots from Revival, and only turning in to seven goals total. When that's about, like, what is that, 27 shots in total? These guys playing, or yeah, something like that. Math's hard on stream. Anyways, it's been ridiculous to watch the way that these guys continue to pound the backboards, to pound the nets of each other, really forcing players to be defensive, even though they're being very, very aggressive. And I'm, I'm enjoying how Revival's approaching the situation. They are trying to wait for opportunities as opposed to force too many. But they're also keeping up the pressure when they need to. They were able to keep that a close game, you know, put into overtime, which is exactly what they have to do. And now, as we move on to Manfield, it's one game apiece in the series. Both teams with opportunities to score. Both teams with opportunities to take this one. Chrome gets it past the front line of NRG. Be sad, Junior in the back here gets the clear. Gino puts it back down to the box. Hot Wheels said looking to take a shot, but Jacob comes over the top, and now Fireburner gets the transition. Puts out on the offense here. Chrome waiting patiently. Gets it past Jacob. A nice play. Winning the 1v1. Now Gino dropping it out to Hot Wheels City, who takes a shot, goes just wide of the goal. It'll be Fireburner who's able to get the transition here. Switching back and forth, trying to get that aggression, but we see Revival just trying to contest a lot more things this time. They're trying to take advantage of the fact that NRG sometimes likes to slow the play down. Sad Jr. over to Hot Wheels Sid. He's going to play this one across his own net. A dangerous play as Fireburner was coming in fast, but he's able to get it through. Now Gino and Hot Wheels Sid. And a nice pinch there to go just wide of the goal. Jacob drops to the far side. Oh dear, Chrome and Hot Wheels Sid bumped each other. This will leave kind of an open backfield, but NRG has had a difficulty transitioning. They will be able to get the save. Still scoreless here with 3.53 left to go. Just saw some of the most interesting, peculiar bumps I've ever seen. <laughs> Chrome was trying to retreat as Jacob went for an aerial and he actually smacked the back of Jacob completely unintentionally. And they both just kind of got messed up for it. Nice shot there by Chrome. Fireburner will get the save. Keep it a scoreless here. Game number three. Bouncing it off the backboard. Revival looking to draw up more defenders, see if they can create that first goal. Sad Junior will play it down the middle, but Gino Cop, excellent positioning. Sad Junior able to pick up the touch. It's back in the orange as Chrome pressures. Looking to shoot towards the net. Fireburner having to make saves in net right now. His NRG is decently trapped in their own half. Hot Wheels, Sid, predicting the clear, actually able to keep the pressure on. Fireburner in the air, cannot win the 50-50s. It drops back towards the net. Hot Wheels, Sid puts it into the corner, dropping back, but Chrome will miss. And that leaves it with just Gino on the back lines. So he watches just to stall time here. He's gonna get the Spider-Man clear. Fireburner again demoing Hot Wheels Sid in goal. But Jacob does not get the touch. That'll leave it back in the hands of Revival. Hot Wheels Sid now up at the midfield line. Will pass out to Chrome, watching. He's gonna try and get it past Sad Jr. He does, gets it over his head, but there's Fireburner. A nice touch towards the goal. Hot Wheels Sid puts it back to the midfield line. Back and forth right now. Every team playing very, very aggressive. Able to get up and into each other's half with ease and with speed. Now I will sit looking for the breakaway, shoots it and gets into the net. First blood on the board here. Up until these last few seconds, I was gonna say, I feel like the reaction time on the field was just halved. Everyone's playing so quick and they're not even hesitating on their decisions. But again, we see NRG struggling to get back to net. Hot Wheels Sid took his time with that shot. Either he looked around, although I was on his camera, I don't know if he knew for sure, at least not until it was a little bit too late. But his teammates might have let him know, like, open net, take your time, get the target. It's well done. Now we're seeing a revival. The one point lead here as we've crossed halftime. Sad Jr. puts it out to the middle. Fireburner falling back will play it into the corner. Let his teammates try to get set up behind him, but Hot Wheels Sid just following ever so closely behind makes it a two goal game. Hot Wheels Sid knew there was not much of a choice Fireburner had here. He's going to try and put it to the corner. He probably should have put it to the back wall and hit a little bit harder, maybe a pinch, try and get it out, but he hit the corner, which actually started to center it for Hot Wheels Sid, but it did still get an exceptional angle. 2.07 left to go in game number three, and Revival has started to really heat up here. The strongest lead they've had all series. Fireburner in the air, looking to see if he can get NRG on the board. Uh, Wilson puts it into the corner as Chrome falls back. Sad Junior keeps it there. Gino's up in the air. Cannot win the 50-50 as Sad Junior gets a nice touch. Put it over the top, and now Hot Wheels Sid coming up from the back. Sends it on to the backboard. He draws up Fireburner. Can Chrome finish? Drops one towards the net. Fireburner able to recover after missing the clear. We're still seeing Revival up on offense. As they continue to pound shot after shot, not allowing it to cross that midfield line. 
Now it bounces around the corner. 127 left on the clock. A demo from Jacob will buy some space here from NRG. They're able to move up the field, but the demo does mean that Genocop spawns back on defense. And they will not be able to get a shot in just yet. Having to fall back as Hot Wheel gets it past Sad. Fireburner makes the save. Just barely able to get there in time. Keep this lead from increasing here from Revival. Right now, though, NRG, they've got to start scoring. How will Sid striking has been phenomenal so far in this series. I've seen him take some shots. It's just the consistency of his accuracy. He's putting them on target with pace. Jacob carrying this one up and into enemy territory. Gets it past the back line, and there's NRG on the board. Keeping them alive. 50 seconds with a goal. I've seen NRG do way more and way less time. Jacob getting that second touch, trying to suck that defender out. He gets the first touch off the wall. Defender assumes, like, all right, he's going to let it bounce and then get the power shot. But Jacob gets it before it hits the ground trying to fake him out on the timing. With 50 seconds remaining, NRG is only down by one. Very manageable equalizer here. Got a lot of time to work with. This Fireburner goes up, gets the first touch of offense, puts him to the corner. Jacob looks to respond, but the Spider-Man clear from Chrome will shut it down. Now it's over on the side. No presence there, no contention coming through from NRG. Geno Cop finds the long shot. It's 3-1 Revival. Sure, Revival's a bit happy they got a cushion in this way. Geno Cop just putting one on target from far just to keep the pressure on. Sad Junior going for that corner boost. Two NRG players unprepared for something with just so much speed. And it's, it's when you have been playing consistently tightened up into the box, playing off the backboard, trying, making really short, small shots, those long shots can really easily catch you off guard when that's not what you've been expecting out of the team. And with 23 seconds remaining, down by two again. It's looking like Revival's pretty well set up to take game number three here. Doing very well. As they pop that one out, Fireburner over to the side. NRG pressuring this. Eight seconds remaining, can Fireburner drop it in? No, Chrome blocks it. He has another opportunity, Sad tries to shoot. They draw Chrome onto the post. Fireburner will drop it in. They've got two seconds remaining. It is possible, Carpet. It is possible. Wow, it will be quite a struggle, but this is a signature pressure. We've seen NRG put on time and time again, and again, Fireburner being that last touch. We see Jacob and Sad Jr. contesting those balls quick, getting up in their face, and then just always there for the shot Fireburner will be. Oh, the, the win, they go for this, the kill the kickoff. Revival does not let that one go anywhere. And he'll touch the ground. Revival taking game three after dropping game number one. They take two straight, and they've got NRG on match point. Revival seems to be a sleeper team. We know they have the skill, and they're pulling it out against the teams they know they need to. It could be a mixture of teams kind of looking at Revival as a team like, all right, they don't have a lot of power in the sense of they haven't competed in the RLCS as a group before. Um, you know, they don't have as much experience, so they're probably mm -hmm. looking at them as a team they don't need to try as hard on. Mm -hmm. But Revival is making sure, like, you better, because we will start taking games off of you. They have taken down G2, Take 3, and now looking to take NRG as well. Yep. Some of the three big powerhouses in North America. Yep, they have really, really stepped it up here, and it's been really awesome to watch the way that they have been able to shut down that just chaotic, brutal offense of NRG. They're playing so well, and we, we were seeing in games two and in games one, they're getting scored on, well, I guess in all the games, really. They've been getting scored on when they can't get the hard clears, when they're allowing the shots to continue to come in over and over and over again, but when they're able to immediately transition, just not allow NRG to start sieging up on their goal, that's when they're able to just continue to pressure it out, and like we've been saying all series long, the defense on NRG has been a bit sloppy. They've been sending a lot of overcommitments, and that has just allowed, especially Hot Wheel Sid, mm -hmm. to have a lot of shots on net. I think also NRG is maybe trying and thinking a little bit too much when clearing it. Mm -hmm. They want to take control. They want to get the cool short touches to try and psych out Revival's defense and to try and get them on a counterattack. But sometimes the hard clear, you really just need to buy yourself some time, pick up some boost pads, get ready. Even if you know they're going to have to send it right back in your half, at least it gets you a little bit of time to get situated. Game four underway here, and it is Revival with the series lead. If they're able to pull off the win, they will be moving on in the series as Jacob drops this one through, able to get a point on the board here in game number four. Uh, looks like we're missing Chrome. I don't know what happened to him. He looks like he might have dropped off that. Maybe he'll be back soon. He'll be pushing that through. We will actually restart the game and let Chrome come back into this one. But it's been really, really Excellent to watch. Again, I've been very, very impressed to see how NRG has been able to continue just to pound shot after shot after shot onto the net. The way to keep, when you have such a chaotic offense like that, how do you keep you know, your rotations clean and not allow openings for you know, the long clears? You have to, one, be a skilled player. You have to know that you're confident and be able to turn around as quickly as possible. A lot of these people, it, it's actually hard to not notice, but when you use that power slide, that drift mm -hmm. button, 
it allows you to do so much so quick. Mm -hmm. You'll see, and it's tough because if you hold it just a little bit too long or a little bit too short, your car will be lined up right, and when you start gassing or boosting, you're going to be just completely off from where you want to hit. Right. And you'll either hit the ball rogue or you'll miss it all together. So it's a mixture of just like having just the raw skill to just quickly react and also the confidence of your teammate, like knowing like he's closest to that. He's going to turn around. Even though I should get it, I know he's going to be there. And it's really interesting to know that coming into this series, NRG was the highest in North America as far as saves per game at 4.54. These guys are known for being able to keep their net clean, but the fact that they're so high in saves does mean that they're allowing those shots on net to occur. Their, their midfield defense lacks a little bit because they do play so up close and tight, and they're mm -hmm. always pushing all together up as a unit to create that offense, and then when the clears come through, they have to fall back and defend at the goal line. And so that's where we're seeing Revival being able to exploit that, and that's what they got them up here by a game. It's a good point you bring up, because we have spoke many times, uh, you know, I think earlier in the season, that your best bet is to prevent a shot from ever happening on goal. So it probably won't register as a save. The game won't notice that it's a save, but you want to just prevent that. The, the more that you let them have space between their shot and where you're saving it, mm -hmm. it gives them a bigger angle They've got more space to shoot on, and you have to react quicker. If you can close that gap, it tightens up their angle, and you have to react a lot less. You know, like, he's about to hit this, and it can only go up right. above me. Right. Because to my right, there's no more net, and to my left, there's a player. Right. So you know there's only one place you can go. But if you leave space, he can shoot it way above you, way to your left, yeah. and it gives you a lot of time. So we've talked about that, but it, yeah, but as you said, NRG with so many saves, it is kind of interesting knowing the, they're having to defend from the goal line that often. Yeah, for sure. And it, it is really, really being rough and kind of getting countered here by Revival's just even team even team work play style, mm -hmm. where all the players, there, there is basically no leader as far as shooting. They're all like, all of their stats are literally within one number of each other. Like as far as assists and goals and everything, these guys play together. They have only four solo goals total in the entire season. Everything else has been assisted. These guys play together as a unit. And so that's the way that they're able to continue to pressure this net, the fact that they're always right there and they know how each other works. And I think that's a pretty good testament to just how things are going to be and, and why Revival seems to be a little difficult for these stronger teams to deal with. A lot of NA teams kind of still adapt a little bit of that 2-1, where you have mm -hmm. two on offense, one kind of sitting back at the third. We talk about Fireburner, we talk about Pluto, mm -hmm. you know, we talk about Licinio. These are players that usually sit back, wait for that third touch. Uh, we don't see that as much from EU, and we're not seeing that from Revival. Yeah. Revival is a team that's like, we don't have someone that's just always going to be back. We right. just know when to fill. And right. I think it is, pick it, they're able to react a little bit quicker because they don't right. have to like, oh, well, wait, you're the one that always goes to net. Or you're the one that should be back now. They're just like, all right, it's my turn. I'm here. Yeah. I'm doing this. And I think it's what's throwing off a lot of these teams. One well, thing that's really interesting to know is like, when we, we know that there's styles like, like Take 3 likes to play a very wide defensive rotation where they have two up and then one who's almost basically back in goal. And he'll always be attacking the ball forward mm -hmm. and always coming in and hitting it out. And as, as you see their opponents transition, there's always someone who's coming up and immediately challenging. And what we're seeing with Revival more is that there's a player who hangs at the midfield line. And as the clear comes through, he's, he's playing backwards towards his own net, but just pops it up high and then lets the players who are on offense rotate back into defense. Yeah. And so he's going for more of kind of the, the, the buy his teammates time instead of and let them get set up on defense instead of always having a defender. And I think that's partially maybe what makes them so aggressive on offense. I mean, that's definitely a good part of it. Being the last man on defense, your job is literally just to buy time. Right. Unless you have a clear and you're, you have miles before anyone's mm -hmm. going to contest mm -hmm. you and you can you can keep control, but your singular job is to buy time for your teammates to go back. It is not worth the risk trying to do a solo play when you're the only man back and all they have to do is beat you, especially if there's two people coming your way. Well, after that delay, we will have game number four underway. Revival up by two. Looking to finish it off right now as NRG up on offense first. Gino gets a touch to put it in the corner. That'll put Chrome into net, and it looks like Revival has put a sub in. There must have been some kind of complication, but it's looking like Hot Wheels sit has some issues, and now they're going to use Prem, their sub, which when you're up in the lead against NRG is actually a really not very good situation. Yeah, especially when we've been talking about Hot Wheels Sid all series and just how aggressive of a player he's been, how his shot placement has been very on point. Prem's got some big shoes to fill. Let's see how he performs here. Right now, Revival is up on offense. They just won a bunch of 50-50s in a row. And Chrome able to put this one around. Can Geno Cop finish it off? It will go in, and there's Revival with the lead. Doesn't seem to be causing much of an issue. I hope NRG isn't underestimating the skill of the players that have been on the field. Chrome getting that over to the side, just bouncing off the backboard. Side Junior thought he had a little bit of time for that, but Gino Kopp going to contest it before he can save. First goal coming at 417. Revival with the lead in the series and in the game. Poised to possibly take this series 3-1. Now Chrome looking to play it safe in the box. 
almost has a scoring opportunity, but will be cleared by Sad Jr. And he gets the long, the breakaway, all the way from his own box tie game. It's looking like Chrome was about to score. He had the time, but then Sad Jr. pinching it off his hood. Wow. Prem, as you said, right there, waiting at the midfield instead of back. Now, this situation happens, what, once in 15 pitches. Yeah. So you don't really want to always anticipate that. But in situations like this, it tied the game. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, perhaps it's a good way. Oh, dear, is it going to get the counter? Is he going to get it? Oh, Chrome able to put it over to the side, block away the quick off opportunity from NRG. But we're seeing, I, the, the, I think that's a good good point we bring up, that we see NRG always play up tight and in the box, but these are all very skilled players. You can probably put shots on the net from anywhere, and the long clear shots, the long shots from your own half, are a way to like hard counter that midline defender strategy. Yeah, and just, just to clarify, from uh, from what we can tell, looks like it has some connection issues. So it's looking like it's a good thing Prem was available during this game. For sure. Because uh, I honestly don't know what would have happened. That is That is why... That is why you have a sub. You don't want to get DQ'd. Fireburner puts it over to the side. Jacob tries to pressure it out, but Prem is there. Drops it towards the box. Geno Cop in for the 50-50. It goes out to midfield to Chrome, who's able to get it through that front line. Geno Cop now. Nice pop. Does what it go shot. in? Oh, so close. An excellent redirect that just barely goes wide of the open net of NRG. Still tie game here with 3.04 left to go. Take a look at how Jacob just took that aerial. He followed through right behind the ball, knowing it was going to get contested. He didn't want to take that second touch. He wanted to be the second touch. So he waited for his opponent to come contested, kept his bar at the ball or his oh. car at the perfect distance. Oh, what? It went in anyways. They got the demo on the chrome, but Prem's shot just rolls right in. What happened here? <laughs> he gets a touch and it's just like just tight enough of an angle to not hit the bar. That was ridiculous. Like, I think they all thought it was going to bounce. And if they're like, just demo Chrome, it'll be OK. But Prem, well done there with a great angle getting the lead here for Revival. It was a great demo, and Chrome somehow not own goaling as well. Chrome pressuring that one, gets another one over the top of Fireburner, and it's a two-goal lead for Revival. Energy just seems to be falling apart. Fireburner stuck in the corner with a really weak touch, mm -hmm. pushing it out into the kind of the midfield-ish keeping it away from the walls. His bet there is he's going to want to put that to the corner, cut off the angle, keep it on the wall. He didn't take his time, didn't turn his car. He just got the touch. Oh, no. And Jacob looking quiet. He and Fireburner, I don't, I'm not, not sure what they're doing right now. Maybe just feeling feeling depressed after that brutal dunk he got from Chrome. Now they're up here pressuring another opportunity. Prem's just going to put one in. If they're just going to sit there, he's going to punish. It's a four-point, three-point game now. Either way, I mean, just like any other sports, you want to play until a rule has been made. You generally don't just want to give up goals. Mm -hmm. If the situation happens where energy isn't able, whatever issue they're having, if it doesn't get resolved, they're just letting in more goals. Nope. Yep. More more time here for Revival. So right here at halftime. And it's, uh, it's not looking good for NRG. Chrome actually going to slow this one down and just play it into the net. And it looks like I'm not quite sure what is up here with NRG. I'm sure we will find out soon. But that is, it has continued to be Revival, especially up until the point when both teams were giving it their all. It was still so strong for Revival, the way that they were continuing to play. I'm impressed with just the way they've been doing mm -hmm. uh, pretty much everything. They, they knew what they were up against. They knew how NRG worked. Um, I, I'm really curious to know what happened with Hot Wheels, but I yeah. understand it there was some sort of complication. The three of them were playing very well together. That just wide rotation seemed to cause a lot of issues for NRG. Just enough, because, you know, as we heard from Gibbs and, and the desk, it's looking like they were expecting a 3-1 or a 3-0. We're in this situation, not as much. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it was, it's the way that I love to see the way that their sub comes in, and they still are able to be strong on the offense. He even gets one of the, the game-leading goal after they got made the tie-up. There was 1-0, one, one then 1-1, one, one, and then it was Prem who was able to put in the goal. It, it was a crazy-looking angle. You expected the demo on the Chrome to be exactly what they needed, and it was, it was very impressive play there for Fireburner, getting the demo and not own goaling, but the angle of the ball still went into the goal. And I do want to talk a little bit about the future now that we have time. And mm -hmm. RNG is about to play against G2. Mm -hmm. Now, as we know, G2 has struggled. They're 0-3 mm -hmm. in the season, which is they've dug themselves in a very comfortable, cozy hole. I hope they brought some pillows. Yeah, for sure. they really have to make sure they dig out of this one. Mm -hmm. But if NRG is going to go in potentially tilted against G2, especially since G2 did perform really well in the midseason madness, even though... Is kind of weird outliers. You know, you're on mm -hmm. non-standard maps, you're on Rumble. But even on non-standard maps, they were playing well, they were playing tight. This hopefully won't just lead NRG into some sort of weird spiral out for this week. Yeah, I would hope, I would hope not. They, we want to see them play very well. And as they come into this, they came into this week 2-2. Two and two, And so they are in a decent spot. If they can just get two more wins, they will have a winning record, all but clinching, and mm -hmm. despite or uh, avoiding 
a like ridiculous tiebreaker situation. If you have that 4-3 record, you are going to be in that top six. And so if we see them, if they can pull off the win here against Revival or against G2, they're sitting so pretty going in to week number four. But the same thing is true of Revival here. They have this, and then they both, both NRG and Revival have to play Exodus next week. So that's going to be a very, very difficult match. That's the unbeaten team. But they all have matches they can win next week. If they can pull off the win here, and then, you know, against G2 or against somebody else next week. I mean, they, they're sitting in a very good spot to really secure that top six. They definitely are looking well, especially because the teams they've been beating are the teams that you'd expect them to not beat at all. The mm -hmm. teams they've been doing really well against. It almost seems like they see the, the bigger team, they see the more power, and they're like, all right, yeah, boys, let's take this down. They yeah. seem to do, they're, they're kind of a bit giant slayers, but they struggle a bit in some series that, you know, maybe wouldn't have been as difficult given just the histories and statistics of some of these teams. Um, but in general, NRG is a team, as Gibbs was talking about, a team we're looking at potentially being in the top two by the end of the season. But looking out today's going, this could kind of knock them down in that three or four spot. It'll be interesting to see. We will be replaying game number four, I've been told. I've not been given a reason as to why okay. we'll be playing, re -game, playing game number four, but probably some technical complications. Um, very interesting to see. So we'll see if they are able to make a difference here. NRG getting a stroke of luck there. They will be able to have a restart here on what would have been an eliminating match or eliminating game for them here. They still have a hope as they're able to try and play this one again. This Revival needs to ensure they are tight on everything. They are now using a sub mid-series mm -hmm. mm -hmm. because of some sort of complication that they were working well and they were clicking. Mm -hmm. And now that you've, inter you've introduced something new, someone they probably don't play with nearly as much either, mm -hmm. they're going to have to really make sure that they're paying attention to every single move, every single touch, and their car placement especially. It does seem that Hot Wheels sit is back. Back in the match, he has joined the server. So perhaps Prem is going to be back out of this match. We'll have Hot Wheels sit back in, which, again, they were playing so well in games two and three with Hot Wheels sit. His accuracy was on point. I'm certain the Revival feels good about having that back on their team. And NRG now needs to be a little bit scared mm -hmm. as they're now facing a team that has two wins over them in this series. They mm -hmm. are one game away from being knocked out of this series and not taking the victory, which is a little un precedent as far as what we would have expected from NRG, but I think it's more so that Revival has given us something we didn't expect either. Absolutely not. No, Revival continues to exceed expectations in the RLCS Season 2 as they have knocked off two of the large teams of G2 and Take 3. They're looking to add NRG to that lineup. Let's see how game number four pans out here. Jacob puts up to midfield. It's Gino who will put it into the corner. Chrome trying to put it over the top. Now Hot Wheels did with a shot. Blocked away by Fireburner, but Gino in a nice position. Looks to drop another one in. Blocked again this time by Sad Jr. The pressure immediately coming out for Revivals. They continue to put this into the box. Hot Wheels did over the top of two. Chrome's in the air. Tries to drop it on the backboard. Can't quite get it through. Oh, will Jacob clear it? He does. Over to Fireburner, but gets bumped by Chrome. Revival just keeps the pressure on as Gino puts that one out into the midfield. Hot Wheels did over to Gino. Puts it back into the middle. Fireburner clears it away just shot after shot after shot coming through for revival and there's finally the breakaway for sad junior well, how will sit able to just get back but a good portion of why revival can do it is again we see nrg dedicating two players to defensive plays it does sound like there was some technical issues that gave us this restart here we want to have fair competition so that is what will what we will have here with game number four I want to have the results definitely demonstrate what actually happened as Jacob tries to push that one away. A revival with just ridiculous offensive pressure right off the bat here in game number four. Looking to finally clinch up that win. Chrome will drive it back into the middle. Jacob gets a clear. Fireburner over to the side. He pushed it through. Can't quite get it towards the net. It'll be Gino who gets a nice touch to put it over him. Now Sad Jr. into the middle. Chrome with the hard clear. Revival looking strong. Excellent offensive positioning as Hot Wheels Sid looks to drop this one into a dangerous position. Chrome in to try and finish. Can't quite get it to the goal. It'll be Hot Wheels Sid who puts it over to the side. Now Fireburner over to Jacob. A nice redirect. Puts it high. But Gino Cobb will drop it into that corner. Chrome over to Hot Wheels Sid. Back and forth here as the first two minutes have come and gone. Nobody has scored yet. Sad Junior crosses it in front of the goal again. Oh, oh no, the touch from Gino is dangerous and Fireburner won't miss that one. There's NRG on the board. These are the risky situations of why you don't always want to take it from the back wall, at least especially if you don't have good power. Gino Cop, knowing that was going to drop a net, knowing that no one was ready to turn around and make the save, he tries his best to get a hard touch, bounce off the ground, but all it does is just perfectly place it in front of an NRG opponent. Right there, right here at three minutes. See NRG now with the lead. 
Sad Jr. takes a shot towards the net. Chrome puts it high. It'll be Jacob there in the backfield. So he'll push this one around. Now Chrome trying to clear it out of his own half. Bumps Fireburner out of the way, buying some time for Hot Wheels City. Gets a nice second touch. Put it over in the middle. Now he watches this one as Sad Jr. pushes up the 50-50. He doesn't touch the ball, but completely removes Revival's player up right into the corner. Now Chrome dropping this one down. Uh, Will Sid trying to put it over the top. Fireburner wrapping it around. Sad Jr. in goal, has to get the clear. He does, sends it back into the corner. Chrome immediately follows to just try and keep the pressure on. Jacob tries to clear this one away. Gino with a nice setup there as Hot Wheels Sid puts it onto the backboard. Can they finish this one off? Gino will drop it underneath. What a team play from Revival tying it up. Jacob trying to get a slow clear off this wall here, but Gino Cop just contested it perfectly. No one in NRG close enough to follow that up, and they just get an immediate counterattack from midfield. That's what I mean by I think NRG sometimes they don't do the hard clear when there's two people up in midfield for Revival. 2.09 left to go. The game all tied up here in game four. If Revival can take the win here, they take the series. If NRG gets the win, we will go to the decisive game five. This Fireburner drops it towards Chrome, wraps it high on the wall, draws up Sad and Jacob, but no one is in a position to make a shot off of the clear from Sad Jr. Fireburner will be able to pressure that one up. Here comes Jacob with a nice angle, but just high of the net. Fireburner keeps the pressure on. Hot Wheels does not get the clear, but it will be Chrome who pushes that one over. Now, as they move upwards, Hot Wheels Sid into the corner. And it'll be Jacob who responds. Put it over to the side. Gino now up to that midfield, gets it past all the NRG players. It'll be Sad Jr. who rotates back into goal, and Jacob looks to buy him some time. Puts it out to the middle. An excellent clear there by Jacob. Jacob's wall game, very, very strong. We've seen it a number of times this series. Something he demonstrates often for us here at the RLCS. Gino Cop puts it down to the middle. A dangerous spot as Firebird tries to finish it off. First shot goes high, second shot also above the net. It'll be Chrome over into the corner. A nice setup from Gino. Can Hot Wheels hit finish? He puts it just high on the crossbar. Chrome looks to keep the pressure on, passes it out to Gino, who puts it off the backboard. Can Hot Wheels hit get it through? No, Sad Jr. blocks it away. The passing and the use of the walls here, so excellent from Revival. Sad Jr. will finish it off, though. The counterplay from NRG gives them the lead. This hard pass from the corner, trying to cross as much as he can, Jacob, Puts it just at the crossbar, making Chrome hesitate for a half a second. He's like, is that in? He had to read the trajectory. Mm -hmm. It wasn't in. Okay. Now let's try and read the second touch. Oh, no, it's too late. Energy's yep. already here for the shot. Yep. It was very... Very excellent play after just a massive amount of siege coming through for Revival. NRG quickly gets a counter play and giving them the lead back. But right now with 34 seconds left, Revival's not done. They continue to knock on the door. They've got Sad Jr. up on the wall. He plays it down light to Jacob. Puts it off the wall and back into his own corner, actually, giving Chrome some space to work with. Oh, but they draw out, too. Gino Cop has to fall back as Gino, or Jacob, in the corner. Tries to set this one up. And now Jacob, Gino Cop in the middle, looking to drop it through. Can't get it past that junior. It'll be Chrome over onto the backboard. Hot Wheels it drops it down in a dangerous spot. Chrome in to finish. Puts it over the top of Fireburner, and it's a tie game. Chrome's placement on the back. I at first, didn't know if it was going to be very good, but Hot Wheels sit beating out Jacob on the wall, giving Chrome the shot. He goes for the bounce shot mm -hmm. as well. I think it might have actually been a little bit of an accident. I think he got there a little bit too late, but hits it off the ground so he can put more height on it since he wasn't able to get under it before he get reached the actual position. No, I think it definitely did wonders to juke out Fireburner, who was in net, which Sad Jr. almost with the goal leading, the game winning goal there. So at this final second, NRG in a good spot to possibly get a buzzer beater here. Chrome will clear it straight down in the middle. It'll touch the ground overtime two games in a row, Carpet. Revival really has shown us a side that they are capable of, really showing just their co just continuously to work together, be just an overall menace as a three-man squad. No one taking any position, all just being there when they need to be. Gino Cop trying to drop that one through. Sad Junior now looking to keep NRG alive in the series. They just got to beat out Hot Wheels, Sid. They do, and Fireburner gets the tight double tap going to game five. A sigh of relief for NRG, giving them to game five. But that first touch over to Fireburner was gorgeous, and then Fireburner doesn't do anything with it. He actually jumps, does nothing, gets the mind game, is able to push it onto net. We will be moving on to that critical game five. NRG holding their hopes alive. They got to be feeling good. I mean, you got to be frustrated as a revival. 
having that, that, that reset there because of player connection issues. Because they had such a strong lead two times in a row, and then in that third game, NRG able to come through and pull it off here, giving us the game five. They like to make it exciting here. Yeah, and to be fair, Revival got a reset since there was a connection issue on their end. Mm -hmm. They were able to yep. bring in the substitute. So whatever it was, thank, uh, you know, I'm happy it's resolved. For sure, for sure. And it seems like we're on fair playing grounds now. Everyone seems to be um, you know, playing at their full potential. And we will be moving on to Urban Central for game five which is uh, NRG's old home court. I would consider probably still their home court. They were the kings of urban, and this was, this was the namesake map. Excited to see if the home field advantage makes them feel good or will Revival be able to bounce back here in this game number five. It all comes down to this. We've seen both teams take two games now. Who's going to be able to take the game five? Who do you think is going to be? <laughs> That's not a team. That is a team, <laughs> and that's what I'm predicting. Just a little fun fact, though, just everyone's, if anyone's curious. Kings of Urban, the name does come from an old map in the old game. Jacob mm -hmm. is a Sarfet. Um, Urban was one of the maps, and, you know, Kings of Urban. Ah, yep. That's a cool name. For sure. Um, it's a shame that they go by energy now, but also congratulations to go by energy. Absolutely. Now. Pretty cool. Absolutely. It's, it was one of the most storied community organization, community name, community team names, the Kings of Urban, and they... uh. Retire to give light to a greater glory here of NRG. And now they are looking to take this series off of Revival. Hot Wheels have pointed over to the side. It's Chrome. We'll move up. But on the backboard, Hot Wheels does not get the angle. They draw up all three players. Geno Cop is going to have to make a critical save. He puts it high. Fireburner will be able to finish that one off. And NRG strikes first. NRG coming up. Strong right off the bat. They want to make sure they get this victory. They've let it too close, but Gino Cop's touch is a little bit too weak. He actually just places it perfectly for Fireburner. Did I say Jacob's a start bet? I'm going to say Sad Junior. Is was, Jacob? I don't nah. know. I don't know. I, I know Sad Junior is. I'll ask him later. I swear I knew. I believe Fireburner is as well. Many of them are. It'll be Chrome. But Jacob's this, not. Fireburner. Is it just Fireburner Sad Junior? This is a silly conversation. <laughs> I'm not in the right set of mind to even talk about this. Hot Wheels said, dropping that one down. Oh, my goodness. It goes in on the touch from the NRG squad. But now we see it. Like you said it, man. These guys really like a close game. That pinch, though, bouncing perfectly <laughs> down in front of the net. Sad Junior coming across, not expecting his defender to actually be there. But I think, I think the guy in net actually would have had that. After that early goal on the... Just positioning mistake there from Revival. They have an opportunity. Oh, they almost take the lead. Hot Wheels said was able to get the tying goal. Luckily for Revival, that breakaway there went a bit wide. And now Geno Cop able to push this one across that midfield line. Sad Junior passing up to Fireburner. Chrome puts it over the top. Sad Junior in to try and take another angle. Excellent placement from Sad Junior. NRG is back in the lead. Quiet Sad Junior seems to be a little bit louder now. Getting that from the corner. Fireburner trying to contest it. Forcing Chrome to come up a little bit too early, not getting a good touch. And Sad Junior getting the read off the sidewall. That angle, he, he's got to be a happy Junior getting that angle there, you know. Just, if he ever hears you say that, he'll get really mad. <laughs> <laughs> he probably will. It, 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 just, it just broadcast on RLCS television. He's Jacob. Very Sad Junior. Trying to push that one through. Hot Wheels Sid just getting dunked on by Fireburner. Does he get the double tap? Almost puts it in to make it a two goal game. But now Geno Cop putting it over the top of Jacob. Sad Junior moving up. Hot Wheels Sid. Pushing that one through, Geno Cop gets a nice touch, but Fireburner is there. The defense on both sides has been strong, but right now it's NRG who's holding the lead. I have seen an unhealthy amount of posts and crossbar hits from both teams this game. And I think it's a matter of the defenses are coming up quick, forcing them to make a shot a little bit faster than they're comfortable with, and a little bit of trying to react a little bit too quick. You've got some time, take that extra quarter second, try and get the accuracy. Jacob dropping this one down towards Sad Jr. who puts it into the corner. Chrome tries to push it around. It'll be Fireburner who keeps that pressure on. A bump on the Hot Wheels set by Sad Jr. Opens up a bit of space, but Chrome with all the ball control able to push that one out. Jacob has to make the save in goals. The shot came through from Revival. Now Geno Cop in the corner. Chrome will pop it out to midfield. Back and forth, Jacob looking to make the solo plays, drops it towards the goal, gets the demo onto Hot Wheels Sid, but not before Hot Wheels Sid is able to make the save and push it away. Now Geno Cop in the corner. Gonna switch places with Hot Wheels Sid here. Doesn't really get set up in goal. Just kind of watching Jacob, looking for an opportunity to put it out into the middle. Sad Junior will try to block this one away. But it is moving slowly towards the NRG half. Midfield defense for Fireburner will drop it back to Hot Wheels Sid, who takes the long shot. Jacob blocks it away in the air. Now Fireburner 
put it up here. A bit of confusion from Revival as Genocop gets demoed by Fireburner. His demos have been on point all series long. And with 225 left to go, NRG's holding on. A nice demo by Chrome. Can they finish this one off? No, the shot from Gina went wide just when they had an opportunity to tie it up. A bit of inaccuracy is going to hurt them here. Another crossbar hit. This is what I'm talking about. That you, He had the time. Gino Cop had no one contesting him. While I will say that was a very difficult shot, especially the speed it was coming across the field. But if he was able to put that on, they would have had a tie game. Ah, uh, wheel sit now. Pushing this one through. Chrome pounds another shot towards the net, but Fireburner blocks it away, and it'll be Gino Cop who puts it over onto the wall, moving up. Gets a bump on the sad. Jacob there on the side. Bounces out to mid, a nice spot there for Chrome, who cannot get the angle. Gino Cop misses the touch on the wall. It'll be Hot Wheels City who has to press in. His light touch will drop it into a decent position here for Revival. But with 135 left to go, it's back in the hands of Fireburner, who bounces it through two, tries to get the angle, goes into the corner, bumps Hot Wheels City in goal as Gino Cop tries to pressure this one out. Transition back onto offense. The Hot Wheels City playing patiently. Dunked on by Fireburner at the midfield, who's able to get it through Gino as well and into blue corner. It's Sad Jr. who's up to put it off of the crossbar, or not off the crossbar, off the backboard, rather, on the side of the goal. Now Sad Jr. watching. Jacob comes up and just steals it from him. An interesting positional decision there. And it looked like Sad Jr. had decent control. Now at least him back on the back line, and with one minute remaining, Revival got all that work cut out for him here. They've got to equalize. We've seen a few times Revival tries to slow the play down, but NRG doing a great job of just every time they see it happening. Seeing an oh. attempted, oh, oh, can Jacob get it? He, he has no for, boost. He goes for boost instead. Doesn't go for the angle, even though no one was in net. Now Revival moving up, 38 seconds to work with. Gino in to take a shot, blocked by Sad Jr. Hot Wheels Sid looking for an opportunity, but will fall back and let Chrome take it in the corner. He doesn't really have the position he's wanting. He's just going to have to cross his goal very dangerously there. He and Gino in the corner looking a bit confused. Jacob gets it over the top. NRG looking to bounce back here in the series and take it after being on the brink of losing. Fireburner takes another shot. Hot Wheels Sid barely gets the save. All the ball control right now in NRG's favor. Sad Jr. crosses it, Chrome looking, passes to Gino on the wall, can he play this one off, gets it past Fireburner, over to Hot Wheels, but Jacob with the critical touch, puts it straight downfield, and will it touch the ground? There it goes, NRG will take the game. NRG having to work for that victory. Mm -hmm. They were at a very tough position, being down in the series, almost losing it, but able to win the last two games. But they're about to face G2, the team we saw come awake. I'm yep. hoping that they're going to be able to bring this through. We had some connection issues, I'm glad. And also, I definitely said the wrong thing. Jacob is not a veteran of the old game. I know Sad Jr. most definitely is. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave it at that, so at least I can <laughs> fix my error. Um, it's all right. I'm, I'm sorry. It can, be, it can be confusing, but all the players, very, very experienced players, regardless of whether they are veterans of that old game. And my goodness, well, well done here by NRG. Bouncing back after losing two in a row and being there on the brink, able to take games four and five and take the win in the series. They move up to three and one, I believe, in the standings. So it's impressive to see what they were able to do here. We'll be sending it back over to the analyst desk with Axel Toss and the boys. Guys, back to you. Thank you, Wave Pumpkin. Findable Carpet, pretty nice series to start things off, going all the way to Game 5, where at first I thought we'd see Rumble, but then <laughs> it I remembered it's there. not yeah. mid-season mayhem anymore. Only um, every week could be. <laughs> let's take another look at, uh, at that one in the form of the Mobile One High Performance Replay to see how NRG was able to bring it back against Revival. We started off with NRG looking really strong. The last 2 minutes and 30 seconds was all them. They had a ball control the entire game, but Game 2, Revival, came back. Yeah, I want to mostly say it was a sad and fire burner show at the beginning there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely incredible from them, or not sad, sorry, um, uh, Jacob and, and yeah. Fireburner. But then Jacob with that great pass, and Sad got that last second goal to tie the game, but they couldn't get it uh, done in game two overtime. And it seemed like every single game after that, it was all revival at the start, mm -hmm. and then slowly the energy would come back, and then we had the technical issues, we're really not sure exactly what happened there. So it was a little bit hard for Revival in mm -hmm. game four to try and bounce back when they had a lead uh, in that game and it had to be restarted. So that's a tough one to come back from. Uh, but the energy bounced back and they get the two wins in a row to take the series. And Fireburner, again, he had eight goals in five games. Not as many uh, like per average for his stats, but still a really uh, good job there. Mm -hmm. Sad though was really quiet. Game three, he had the donut shots. Yeah, and it seemed like they were trying to play him on defense way more than usual. Usually Fireburner's that third rotation. Mm -hmm. They had said back, and he looked a little flat-footed for 
uh, most of that series until later on he started getting warmed up. Uh, so we'll see if that continues uh, as they go over to G2. But that was a huge win for them. It, it keeps their hopes for a number two seed alive. And Revival, they have to... Well, I don't know. I think they're lucky that they only have one game this week because that's a tough loss. It is. To uh, try and bounce back on. Uh, they're st are still looking good for top six, but top two is probably out of the question with three losses unless there's like a big tiebreaker. Uh, but they should be looking forward to uh, next week's games because they got two big ones left. I feel like they did have a lot of momentum throughout that entire series. Like mm -hmm. a lot of people might look at that series and be like, oh, NRG won. But it's like I feel like Revival played really strong throughout that. Well, again, I, I, I'm, I mean, Carpet brought up too. I mean, after I mean, Energy started up very strong, but after a bit, Hot Wheel Sid started to pick up, and he started getting snipe shows, snipe shows, passes, and uh, once he started to light up, the whole team did too. And, and yeah, you're right, Revival played really strong uh, in that series despite it being turned around. So NRG pulling out the win, had some clutch plays, had some really fancy plays in there as well. And as we stated, the next match is going to be NRG versus G2 Esports. A must-win situation, in a sense, for G2. We'll have to see if they can make it happen against NRG. We're going to take a quick break here from the Rocket League Championship Series. You're watching League Play for North America. We'll be right back. 